Hi, Cesarin here with another episode of Path of Exile University, and today I'm joined by NeverSync, who makes the NeverSync filter and filter blade. If you're not familiar with him, absolutely check him out. He does have a Patreon where you can support him as well, and without further ado, I will let him take over. Thank you so much, this one. Th Thanks th thank for joining you, me. and absolutely. Uh, welcome chat, uh, welcome viewers. Let's dive right in. So today I want to talk a little bit about item filters. We'll talk quite a bit about understanding the filter. We'll be talking about the strictness and economy implications. We'll think about how to think about loot and value. And afterwards, we're going to dive in on into my filter and on into filter blade. We'll talk about the filter blade workflow, how you best want to customize your loot filter. We'll talk about how to speed up your editing so that you can do it really fast, really often if you need to. And uh, we'll also take a look at three practical sessions and learn a lot of power tools so you can bring your filter game to the next level. So very uh, short introduction. Who am I? I'm playing since closed beta. I'm 33 years old. I'm a solutions architect doing my day job. I play every single league and pretty much every league I focus on getting all content done. I enjoy bossing. I enjoy Uber content. I usually play one to two weeks per league. Um, I rarely do more than two leaks, sorry, two builds per league because I don't really enjoy leveling a lot, but I always play a new build. So never ever repeat builds. Maybe like it's completely different and rewarmed like three years in, but nothing else. Um, I pretty much always play softcore because at the beginning, my builds usually run against the wall because I didn't think of something or didn't have time to prepare uh, quite well, but a few iterations in, they work out quite well. I sometimes play cell found or start in small groups or private league. I'm working on my own little indie game as a hobby, and otherwise I do enjoy scuba diving, cats, and coffee. Right, let's talk a little bit about my filter. That's how you potentially know me. I'm doing the whole filter gig since over eight years. Um, I also designed the filter blade website together with some friends, most notably Topnak and Haggis. Um, my filter had over 300 published updates for which change logs information. I have a large suite of utilities and automation and all kinds of generation thing in order to make the filter work easier. I also have a few developer notes down there. So if you're a developer, check those out. I think you might like them. Um, we do have an active Discord. I will link the or tell you how to get there later on. And afterwards, um, we also, yeah, I'm going to talk about that afterwards. And also, my setup is designed in a way that if necessary, I can update all of the filters on the PoE ladder, on Filter Blade, on GitHub in like less than 50 minutes, including caching everything. So it's all CI CD based, a lot of automation, a lot of testing. And this is really the way to go with a game that can change really fast. Right. Why not build a filter from scratch? You can, but you probably shouldn't. You're competing with people who have spent th thousands of hours into filter development. And you probably want to instead focus on areas you're really good in. Let's say you have some sort of really special hidden knowledge. Only you know that, some sort of special farming strategy. I would rather recommend you to use filter blade or maybe another filter in order to build in that farming strategy into that filter instead of spending time reinventing the wheel. I mean, you could just as well build your own browser or a smartphone. If you're really passionate about it, do it. Otherwise, like with everything else in humanity, rely on someone who has spent a lot of time and knowledge on doing that right. With that said, the rest of the presentation will focus on my filter and filter blade, but there are also other good filters out there like Sovereign or Rack of Days. Check those out. All right, let's talk about my filter. What is my filter about? Well, if you want to understand it, I really recommend you to head over to Filter Blade and scroll down and you get a lot of explanations, um, especially if you're watching it like on YouTube, you can check these out. There's also these little wisdom scrolls that are often overseen on the site and you can hover over them to get a lot of details. These are specifically useful for new players as they contain a lot of information about the game, not necessarily around, about the filter. But I want to give you a real rundown about the most prominent and interesting features that you likely want to know or don't know as a player. On filter plate, you have these little icons next to every single item. These are map icons. These don't show up in the game next to the item. These show up on the minimap. If you see any item in game, oh yeah, maybe just a quick um, note. If you are not familiar with loot filters, loot filters 
give you the ability to highlight items, to hide items in the game like PoE, where there's thousands of item drops. Potentially, you want to use a loot filter so that you can minimize the items you don't want to see and get the items that are valuable really, really fast. And my filter does that with pretty much all kinds of scenarios. Anyone can write filters, but they're kind of like a programming language. At this point, my filter is at 10,000 lines. I'm not sure if you would want to do edit this by hand at this point. And it's not because it's like, it's not because it's inefficiently written. Every single rule does something. It's because PoE is just highly complex. And that's why it's a good idea to actually, well, use someone else's loot filter. Also, I'm going to take just one second to turn off the lights. They're a little bit annoying. <laughs> All good. I think my camera makes them a little bit too bright, but that's fine. All right, let's go. So, um, when you find items using my filter, especially unique ones, uh, sometimes they'll have blue map icons. Blue usually has the special property in the filter. It means the item has something special about them. It means it needs some manual attention. The filter can't tell if it's uh, expensive or not, but it might be interesting. For instance, it could be a synthesized mod. A filter can tell what I, how the item is synthesized. It could have something really valuable, like a plus one uh, friendly charge shield, but it could be like something completely worthless. For uniques, this often means this unique could have a valuable base attached to that. If it's a small blue star, or actually this representation on the right, the ambushments, it means the item is only valuable if it drops from a boss, otherwise it's not valuable. So you can skip it while mapping generally. You can even hide it in filter blade if you're aware of this strategy. But then you have to manually check hidden items. Um, the left one, the MB amulet, means this item could be valuable anytime. Most of the time, it's not. A good example is Headhunter, a leather belt or a heavy belt from Ageblood is usually something completely worthless. Uh, one, but one in 1,000 times, maybe it's not. Maybe it's uh, something incredibly expensive. So check out for these blue items. They mean manual, in, manual checking required. Um, the filter also has a bunch of special currency sections. There's stack currency section, leveling currency, and leveling stack currency. It's a bit annoying to edit. Uh, we are working on making it better. But just when testing, keep in mind that if you drop like a stack of currency on level one in, in the strand, sorry, in like one of the, in the coast, it will look different than if you drop them in the map. Um, also, interesting note to know is if you see the teal border and a purple background, that means the item is identified and has a bunch of interesting mods. So if you have like 30% movement speed boots with T1 life and trip resist, these will absolutely high, uh, get highlighted. We also have recently added some negative mods. So if it would be three good resist and life, but bad movement speed, those would never be highlighted. The filter also has two modes, end game and uh, campaign. It's switched at 68. Right, some more board information. Um, if you see, so yellow and orange colors on borders and on and on text fonts, if it's a rare item, is representing the item level. The orange border means it's an item level 86 item. The purple, purple border indicates a perfect item. A perfect item is short for maximum road variable based up defenses. So, Val, so for instance, Val regardless, any armor has a variable defense row that has a 15% range. So the worst uh, row, the Val regalia, will have less energy shield than the best row, Val regalia. And the best ones are fairly rare, especially if you also need an item level 86. This is particularly useful for energy shield uh, crafting and for spectral shields row builds. So you might be interested in those. These do carry some value very early in the league or for specific crafting projects. Um, while leveling, the filter also highlights specific backgrounds for specific build types for rares. Red stands for um, melee weapons, green for archer gear, uh, blue for caster gear, and purple-ish for summoner rares. Four links and three links receive a blue or a two highlight. This is pretty good to know, especially as a beginner, but you, you learn it pretty uh, fast. If you see, oh, there's a text a little bit crangled there. Uh, if you see a map with a red border, that means it's a map upgrade. You, If you find, for instance, a map in a T1 map and it has a red border, it's probably a T2 map um, or a T3 map sometimes in special cases. Now, red borders sometimes are also used for corruption. For instance, with rares, with red borders, it could be a corrupted item or an item with a corrupt implicit with a strong red border. Um, another use case of borders is smaller borders usually represent smaller items. Like on the, in the screenshot in the bottom 
um, right, you see the items with the white border are usually smaller than the ones with the black border. Um, all right, let's jump on. Let's move on. So economy-based steering. The filter is economy-based. That means that the standard filter is recreated every four hours using data from Pure Ninja, base up information, aspect information, which is pretty much uh, serialized digital knowledge of the game and the meta information, which helps the um, script tier items correctly. There's a lot of exceptions where you want to know these things in order to tier items correctly. I don't want to go into details, um, so let's just move on. Trust me on that. A lot of hours and consulting and development were, went into making it right. There is a style progression going on. Oh yeah, and when the basically when the field is updated every four hours, we take all of the pure ninja data, all of this information, and try to retier all of the items to make it as correct as possible. Now this affects currency, divination cards, uniques, um, to an extent, shaper elder influence items, uh, oils. Um, all kinds of things. I think there's 25 different tier lists that are getting um, tiered this way. But not all tier lists. Something like the just the normal rare items or the leveling gear is not economy tier. This is manually tiered. The feedback loop, absolute, the filter has absolutely a feedback loop on the economy. Um, if something is hidden or shown in the filter, this will affect the economy. This is an unfortunate and not an intended consequence but it's unavoidable at this point automation filter plate and the whole thing that users can adjust the filter to what they want and then if something becomes um, hidden more the and rises in price the economy system will pick up on that definitely helps but it's just something i want to tell you it's uh, definitely a side effect and it's just part of the story at this point also the filter has some special uh, care for items that it doesn't know so if it handles the economy and for instance a new unique is picked up and the unique was not registered as a handled unique in the engine you have to try to see it more carefully that being said don't use uber strict and hide uh, boss drops on uh, early on in the league and then you might be wondering why a certain item is hidden that so probably not don't use uber streak in the first three days of the league and afterwards you should be fine but we are trying to put extra care so that this does not happen again um Right. Oh, yeah. And you can see the style progression here. Pretty much the usual style progression goes from opaque black over to colored and more bright borders. And the right, on the right side, you see this uh, at this point, a fairly um, typical for my filter, white, red, red um, highlight. Um, it's kind of signature at this point, this white background. This means a very expensive item. They all use the same sound. They all have a red star attached to them. Sometimes you use a different border. OK, the filter comes in styles and strictnesses. Styles are pretty much just visual. So some of the other styles do change how the filter basically is designed. For instance, some styles don't differ in color between divination card and a currency. They just go by value. They don't actually care about the differentiation of the types. Um, there's also three styles I don't recommend for beginners. Uh, the WoW style is great for farming in the end game, but probably not good at the start because it just cares about value. Um, the Crankwood style, it's it's a fun thing. I recommend you trying it right now. It's like playing a loot box machine, but it's not good. And for casual gameplay, it's kind of very, very special. And Tabula Rasa is only good to design your, whole, your own filter from the start. It has no stylistic information whatsoever. If you're looking for an experience that is less bright and more leaning towards GGG's color scheme, try the Lunaris or the Elder schemes. These are, um, yeah, I, I think these are very much closer to how GGG designed the uh, um, item styles. Velvet and Crimson are the most popular styles by statistical numbers. And there's also the Sandy styles, but compare styles button filter blade, so you can just take a look at everything yourself. What about strictnesses? Strictnesses use a strictness pyramid. Basically, imagine all the loot. If you would uh, make a pyramid out of that, and the worst loot is at the bottom, and the best loot is at the very top, uh, this is how strictnesses work. The higher the strictness, the more layers of the pyramid they cut off. I think it's pyramid, not pyramid. I'm, I'm just going to roll over that. And the 
absolutely uber plus tricked uh, filter will only show the very, very best loot. That does not mean that you only should be using the uber plus um, strict filter because in most cases you will just run a whole map and just get pretty much maybe a chaos open alchemy open. Well, I don't think you'll even see the alchemy open. the chaos open maybe a divination cut out of that. So this is there for absolute crazy scenarios um, like 100% delirium uh, magic fine farming something like that. There is a compare strictness um, button on filter blade to figure to see all of the details. I think the most important thing to note there is that the strictnesses don't change the tiering. You can change the strictnesses anytime. They just adjust what is hidden and what is shown. They don't re-tier anything. Um, I'll talk about what strictness to choose later, but let's first talk about what is item value and how do I value items in the filter? How should you think about that? Well, item value is complicated. Um, Basically, item value is about usefulness or market value. How useful is that item to you at the current time? And how much can you sell it for if you're playing in a um, trade league? But you should also consider item purity or item dirtiness. If you find a exalted orb, you just dunk it into a stash tab and you got your value and you can sell it or use it. If you find something like a fractured amulet, the example below, you need to identify it. You need to check for the mod. You need to have an identification scroll. If you want to sell it, you need to actually price it. You need to interact with the player. You need to invite them. Maybe they're AFK for a while. You need to interact with them. Then you need to sell the item. Then you need to put the item back. All of these things takes time. And time is crucial in PoE. So you want to be efficient you want to be only picking up the items that are considering the purity and the chance that they are actually valuable will be giving you the right result and it's really helping to focus if you have spe special skills or special knowledge that you want to focus on you especially in a trade environment you want to focus on those like are you great with veiled items show a lot of them ignore everything else are you doing Harbinger? Show all shards. Yeah, some of those shards are very cheap, but if you're picking them up all at the same time, why not get some extra Chaos Orbs at the same time just because Chaos Shards are bad? Well, they're less bad if you're doing a lot of Harbinger runs. Um, you also should consider looting convenience. So if something drops super off screen and it's an alchemy and you have 300, you probably don't need to pick it up and run there. So this is also something that goes into thinking about value. So overall value is not just how much is it worth in the economy, but it's taking a lot of factors. How useful is it right now? I mean, it, depending on the context, for instance, a divine of a pointless sneaky tava race. If you're playing cell phone, economy value is not actually interesting. So do take uh, care about, or any item you don't use in a league is, well, basically pointless unless you plan to do something that in standard. So think about that when adjusting your filter and thinking about value. How expensive is it? What is the chance that you actually sell it? How much time are you spending on it? Are you actually having fun? Um, how big is it in terms of looting? How much is, uh, time does it take you to loot? How much space does it take your inventory? How much refinement time do you need to spend on your stash to actually get the item to do what you want? So this is a very important thing you should consider. So let's think about strictness. Especially as a beginner, you probably don't want to customize your loot filter. You just want to grab a good filter and start with it. I recommend you to start out with semi-strict. It's a good um, option to start. It hides the most pointless items, but you will probably not miss them or notice them. Um, once you reach, as a beginner, let's say T5 maps or something like that, switch to strict. Very strict, use it once your gear is all right and you're not actually scouring gears to find some certain upgrade or to, to improve your assistances. When you're more focused on trading on non rare, very strict is quite good. Uber strict is there when you basically have your Atlas done, your character is geared, and you're chaining and farming maps and doing economy stuff, right? Um, now, of course, you can customize this all to your personal progress. In, on cell phone, don't quite go up in the strictnesses this much, but you, in, on cell phone, you probably want to customize more. And if you don't care about customization or styles or custom sounds and all of this stuff, you don't need to use filter blade. And you can also get uh, auto updates, and it's also completely free and very convenient. So then you, I really recommend you to go to Pass of Exile, and you can go to item filters there. And you can find one of my filters up there. There's also hardcore versions there. And you can follow them here. 
Uh, I, I can't see the button there since my fault. And you can forward them and you'll find them in-game. And every time you start your game again, you'll always get the latest version. So this is really, really nice. Um, so don't don't download files if you want just these. Now, these don't come in style versions for reasons, because if I need to update the menu, like I had to update like 100 versions only for one, for software and 100 more for hardcore, and that'd go insane. And you probably don't want that. <laughs> so yeah, uh, let's jump to the presentation. Um, Base assumptions. Before we go deeper and go talk about customization soon, QE is about knowledge. You want to knowledge, experience, and having a plan. And this is what you need to consider when customizing. You want to, it's all about having some sort of vector purpose. Yeah, oh, pur a vector of purpose. You want to think about, okay, you customize your build, your filtered for a goal of leveling a certain character or in order to uh, farm in a certain style. Because loot and PoE is your greatest source of efficiency and power, but it's also incredibly inefficient to pick up everything. So, and managing loot takes even more time than picking up. So try to avoid low purity items that you don't actually want to use. And managing loot footer takes quite a lot of time as well. So you probably want to not want to do it complete yourself by writing your own footer and want to uh, do big changes if possible. We'll talk about that in a second. Mm. And a well created and updated loot footer gives you an edge. So do update your filter occasionally because, especially on trade, their economy data really helps you evaluate all of the new meta strategies. At the same time, if we have any kind of special knowledge about the filter now, I would or or trading. I would definitely appreciate if you would come forward and give me suggestions how to improve the filter, but you can just implement these things on filter blade and take advantage of that and farm more efficiently. Um, so my recommended strategy for you as an advanced user is customize your filter on filter blade. You'll be saving a lot of time. You'll be minimizing screen clutter. You'll see what you need. You'll have a lab better leveling experience. You can use uh, Maven more, I mean, meme sounds to boost your personal moral. Um, you have a much more personal experience in general. Uh, so I absolutely recommend you to take the time to do that. Um, also, a fun idea when leveling in a group with people, use the same meme sounds or the same sound pack. It's uh, absolutely worth it. All right. What we'll do now is we'll jump into some practical examples of customization with Filter Blade. In the first example, we'll just do the very beginning example. We'll do some baby steps. If you've never touched Filter Blade, you will, uh, this is for you. So. We're going to start by talking about some basic pointers. Every pickup you have in a game should have a go. Uh, if you're picking up an item let's, and, you, and you don't intend to sell it, you don't intend to use it for a chaos op in this area, you don't intend to use it, probably this should be hidden at this point. Um, if the loot is basically, if you're like spending a lot of time just scurrying through a lot of rares and just hide more. Then the time you, if you spend more time killing monsters, you get more XP and more chances for big drops. So go up in the strictness. Don't be afraid to do that. It's very scary as a beginner because you think of, oh, you might identify this crazy good rare, but it's really, you'll be doing much more efficiently if you focus on the big wins. Um, you want to build and a filter and you want to use a filter blade in a way that you can adjust your setup in minutes, maybe seconds. We'll talk about quick adjustments soon. Um, and really aim more for optimization through iteration. You don't want to try to get to the perfect filter for all kinds of play styles. I think it's best to have either multiple filters or jump on filter blade quickly, change one setting, click or quick save and be back in the game and continue, continue zooming. I also don't recommend you to have like a distinct 7 million visual styles and sounds. Uh, your pattern matching brain will be thankful if you can, uh, if you see this color on the minimap and hear this sound, you know exactly what kind of item it is and can evaluate if you should go there. So try to think more of the terms of groups. Items I definitely want to pick up, items I could skip on, big, big, big drop, important for my build, maybe a certain thing I need for leveling. Um, also check visibility, especially if you're sharing the photo with other people. Monitors are weird. Mm, some have completely different uh, visualization of colors. 
And some people have visual disabilities, and these you should also consider that, especially when sharing filters with other people. Um, a big suggestion I also have is if you like having items shown, I do that, for instance, that um, are not always required, but you sometimes want to pick up, try to work with transparency. Because if you have a transparent, a more or less transparent background, you can your brain will quickly learn to pick up this pattern and think like, oh, I could pick this up, but this is not something I need to pick up instantly. All right, we have four filter types. Which one should you pick? The soft and hardcore obvious ones. If you're playing economy, just pick the one that you're using in the league. The stable one only changes not for every four hours like the other ones, but only doing larger updates. And we are working to make it so that it only changes the tiering once a week, so that it's super stable at this point. I only recommend using that if you are playing mostly only good for cell phone or standard. And if you are interested in customizing everything yourself, I don't care about trade value at all. So even on even on cell phone, I do find the first field is better because kind of on the high tier, the items you want on cell phone are usually pretty much the same as you want on a softcore because or on hardcore because these kind of represent the merge need of items. But yeah, ruthless is only good for ruthless. It's uh, basically uber soft filter with um sounds for gems and some other additions there's 1000 changes or 1100 changes to take softcore to ruthless um it's a preset internally but yes let's skip so let's prepare for our first session uh what do we do in our first session we want we are we are playing as a beginner we don't know any crazy filter bad features we want to we want to just get a filter and for some reason we absolutely love highs well highs is fun occasionally so you want to highlight coins and contracts even more and you heard about the velvet filter and you want to use it for your gameplay also you want to minimize item management so you want to export as soon as possible let's do that so i'm going to head the filter blade and i'm going to actually log out here just for a second so that we can start from the very beginning. Um, what is transferring right now? One second. Yeah, so I'm showing this screen. Now I'm going to click on log in and you can see the bottom top right. Just don't want to do enter the email address there. And once you're back locked, once you're logged in, I probably could have done that there. You land the screen there. You'll be logging in, by the way, with your account, with your POE account. We do not save. We do not save any kind of information from you. Basically, POE gives us the permission to update the filter on your account for you. But we can't, we don't know your password, don't know your email, don't worry about it. It's called OAuth, the same thing you use basically everywhere else on the internet right now. Um, right, so we want to use the strict velvet filter. Let me open my notes on the other side so I know what the goals were. Gonna use, we're going to set the slider to strict and we're going to join. Uh, switch to velvet. We can scroll down to see some details, but those are perfectly fine. Now, remember, we wanted to address the highest items more. Now, you don't know where the highest items are. One thing you can do is just scroll down and look for the highest items here. Um, and then jump into the section. This is absolutely possible. So you can just Ctrl F highs, for instance. And then you can right click there and click on jump to rule. And you'll find this item there and you can edit it there. But I don't want to go this way. Let's just jump to customize. This is where you change your filter. And now right here, you have the search bar. And the search bar is incredibly useful. Believe me that. We spent a lot of time to make it really, really powerful. So if you search for heist, or if you search for specific contract, you'll find it. And then you can jump there. So this way, this way, you, 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 you want to use fractured items. You want to edit fractured items, jump there. You want to find a vow orb you will see everywhere it's highlighted and you can jump there. You can search by item, you can search by filter rule, you can search by commands, you can search by sections, by anything. So definitely use this search bar a lot. So in our case, we want to highlight, we want to increase the highlight on the search bar on the highest items. Now the way um, filter blade is structured, this whole screen is, it's structured by sections and you can go into any single section and edit items there. Often you'll find, you everywhere, you'll find this type of screen, this type of, of UI. Now, there's a lot of buttons there, but it's they're really simple and really easy. Let's talk about them quickly. This is a visualization of how the loot will look like. So, for instance, any of the contracts will look like that. You can also click on them to hear the sound. 
On the left side, you can decide if this item, if this item is hidden or shown. Um, in the middle, you can decide how it's visualized. You can change its color. So if you want to have a highest appropriate purple-ish contracts, we're going to change them here or pink. Um, we can also copy the color and put the same into border and go with some sort of maybe not so ugly purple teal background, something like that. This should work, right? Uh, so this adjusts the, you can also disable the individual elements. This adjusts the color. On top of that, you can change the sound. You can also use custom sounds or community sounds like Zizzer and Soundpack. Hey. Um, and you can adjust the sounds and the volume right here. You can also change the minimap icon right there. There's a lot of to choose from and colors, and you can also adjust the beam, the beams that you see in game, right? Um, what I also recommend is playing around with the copy paste buttons because it's very easy to just move styles from one section to another one. Below that, you see which contracts are shown. So here we adjust in the middle, we adjust how something is shown. To the left, we adjust if something is shown. And below that, we have properties that, that describe when something is shown. So in this case, we highlight all of these contracts. For instance, if we only want to run very specific contracts, we can remove the ones that we don't care about. Now, I don't actually know the contracts that are useful by heart for lock picking and so forth. So I'm just going to pretend I know that. Um, you also see if a section is changed because it has this blue border. You could reset that any time to get to the initial state. So we're also going to adjust the coins, the rogue markers. Um, for instance, we want to give them a little bit of a map icon because we care about those a lot. And let's say the circle works for us, but you want to give them a different color. So pink rogue markers works for us. And you, of course, you can adjust the sound and everything else here as well. For this example, we are done here, but now we want this filter on our account. How do we proceed? We go to save and export. We give it a name. We give it, you can give it a description. And we're going to talk about these uh, productivity options later. So at this point, we just decide our strategy. Do you want to handle the file manually and put in the folder, or do we want to synchronize? Now, usually I recommend the synchronize option. You just click that, and it takes a few seconds, and you're done. Uh, if you go in-game in and go into options and refresh your filter list, it should be there. That's it. Now, if you want to update your filter, so let's say if you change something else, you decide that, OK, highs isn't that cool after all, uh, you want to update. You go to save and click that again. Now, of course, the question you might ha have at this point, what happens if I want to return to the website later? You open filter bait again, and it will show you the list of the filters you have. At this point, you can load the one that you care about. So in this case, it's highest best. And we go back and save it again. And done. This is it. All right, this is our first example. Let's proceed. We looked at the search bar, and I think you'll find it a good feature, so keep using that. I probably should have shown it before that, but it's fine. Um, right, second example. Cell found lightning arrow start. And we want to focus on that endgame section here. What do you want to achieve? In this case, we want to talk about a cell phone build that uses bows. You don't want to see any uh, rares you don't care about. You want to improve a fractured item theory. You want to disable endgame crafting items you don't care about. You want to adjust the venation card theory and have it stay that way as well. You want to give the Crimson Temple map that you heard is the best map ever to run more highlight. And you want fewer recipes, and you want to adjust all of that really easily in the future. Well, that's a lot of things to do. So let's see what we can do to improve it. First of all, let's talk about change preservation. Certainly, at some point, you want to update your filter. We'll talk about when you want it later on, or my recommendation on that. But when you load filter blade, when you, when you load filter blade again, you always get the latest version. So your changes. Basically, your filter gets updated to the latest version. All the changes you've done, you keep them around, and your changes have more priority than the changes in the base update. One second. So if you move something to C2, 
And in the update, it's in T1, it will stick to T2. So your changes have a lot of priority. Oh yeah, and if you're playing cell phone and don't want all of that, if you're playing cell phone and don't want all of the um, ch uh, changes, you can click on the log all button and your changes will stick that way. Uh, in the whole section, by the way, not only the things you change, but everything. We're also going to look at the big power move for your filter blade workflow, the expert workflow. View, why is this useful? Because it allows you to update the filter in one single click. Not kidding. We'll take a look at that later. later. Just one click necessary. Finally, we'll also take a look at the right click tool that allows us to edit a lot of things much easier. Um, it's criminally underused and also criminally undermarketed by us. And finally, we'll use the loot simulator to do some testing. Right? Let's get into that. So we are starting with a completely new filter. We're going to go there, just F5 filter blade, not loading anything. That's fine, right? So I do have my notes there. Uh, we are playing cell phone, right? So we want to go with a stable filter at this point. Um, we are only caring about the end game part for this simple example. There will be a leveling example afterwards. Um, we want to adjust the end game things. So we go to customize, scroll down to end game rare items, and first you want to see more bows and less of the other items. For that, we're first going to look into weapons and armor. And you will encounter this uh, colorful chart. And this might look scary at the beginning, but it's really, really powerful. Before we look on how it works, let's look into the individual tiers. These show how and what items are highlighted. So we have the T1 items, the, these look like that. We have the T2 items, the T3 items, and the T4 items. You see that T4 items are already hidden, but we are playing an archer and let's hit and hide all of the things we don't care about. Basically, the higher the tier, the more meta and useful the base is. So we don't care about daggers, we don't care about true daggers, war staves. Well, these are a lot to hide. Yeah, that's hiding all of these behind is a bit annoying. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click this section and say turn off all T3 rules. Now every single T3 rule is disabled and instead we're going to just highlight the ones we care about. So we could scroll down, find bows and armors, gloves and helmets. We don't actually care about anything else. Let's leave those in B and maybe the quiver's done. All right. Now comes the base type matrix. So what do we do about this thing? Imagine this thing like a table that shows what item is in what tier. Now, pretty much all T3 tiers are already hidden, right? We know that T4 is completely hidden, and T3 only the bows are shown and the armors and gloves. So we don't actually need to care, take care of a lot of other things. For instance, we can go to close, and what we can now do is we select the brush we want to use and we move the items around. So if I click on the Gemini claw, on the Imperial claw, it's going to move to the tier I select. So I'm going to unsee all of the things I don't actually care about. You can also just see all item by tier, the whole list, and then move it around a little bit easier. But we'll do a little bit of adjusting this way. There's also a few more efficient ways to do that, but we'll look at those in the next example. For now, let's just work with what we, have, we know. So I'm going to go to body armors, and since I'm playing an evasion boot, I'm going to focus a lot more on the best evasion gear. So I'm going to pick the T1 brush, and I'm going to paint the evasion gear I care about, maybe all of these and a little bit more on the for the T2 brush when it comes to the evasion body armors, a bit of evasion armor and some evasion energy shield if those are good tiers. But everything else, honestly, I don't even care about that. Let's just remove that. And maybe you also want to pick up um, Vari Gales for potential off build, right? So it looks much better, much more evasion focused. And you can do the same thing for every other thing. Boots, well, boots you maybe want to see a little bit more of all kinds because they are good with pretty much all rows, but you don't really care about all of these armor boots at all. So you know what? We're just going to remove most of these. And move everything else to T2 that is not evasion focused. Maybe keep the T, um, two tone boots around. So you can just paint things to the way you actually enjoy. We use some T3 boots there. And how do we test it? How do we test it any time? How do you know this works? Well, what you can do is we had to simulate any time. You don't need to finish doing anything. And then you only want to highlight the gear and just click show valuable items. 
and see how it behaves. You can adjust the item levels. Now you see the worm school gauntlets are hidden. And you can just play around with that until you feel satisfied. You can head back now and adjust it a bit more. So you would essentially do this for every section. I'm not going to do this for the sake of time here. We're just going to move a little bit through these sections. Go to shields, for instance. Now you don't care about shields at all. So you can high change these here. We're going to learn a more efficient way of doing that soon. We're using custom rules so that you have something that blocks everything of types you don't care about. But for now, this would absolutely be sufficient. 20 minutes or like 15 minutes, you have your perfect searing for whatever you need, and you will only see exactly the items you care about. But let's jump into bows and actually adjust them. So for instance, if you're playing a attack speed focused bow build, you can also see the stats here. So you would probably use spine bow, weapon for attack speed, and sicker and short bow. Yeah, these are good. Uh, growth bow can also go there. Marrakesh, well, let's keep it to the... Uh, um, Keep in T2. Imperius also decent. Citadel, not so much. You're going to throw it in T3. Harbinger and Assassin and Ranger, these are all T3. And this is fine. You can also just throw in a bunch of bows here. All right. So, um, same thing. I would do it for Quivers. And this is also more or less how I built my filter for my, my starting builds as well. The only difference is I would use more custom rules. And we'll take a look at those in the next example. Um, so what did we just check? We just took a look on how you adjust your rare items in the end game. We also wanted to improve our fractured item filtering. So we're going to search for fractured. We find the fractured items and you see them here. And here we see the same system as we saw before. All right, we see a fractured energy shoot items are highlighted. And you can just remove them from this system. So if you don't really care about them, so I would probably recommend still picking them up for an off-build and even on cell phone, but but then you can focus more on the fractured items you actually care about. So in boots, you want to see more energy shield evasion boots. You're perfectly OK with that. What you can also do here is you can adjust fractured classes. So any items that has this class will have this highlight. So for instance, if you don't care about fractured um, rune daggers and scepters because you don't care about playing any kind of uh, cast boot later or wands, you just keep the quivers the boots, gloves, body armors, helmets around, and you would be doing quite well with this setup. So next thing you want to adjust is you want to disable divination cards, or you want to adjust divination cards. There's also an option for us to show off a new feature. You probably didn't see it because we deployed it like half an hour ago, but it's been testing for a while, so I've been quite confident. Um, so this is the divination card tier list, and also gives you icons. And these icons are... Um, show you what kind of reward you will be getting. So there's like unique rewards, currency rewards, map rewards. And as a cell phone player, you probably want to first tier through the unique rewards. And it's a bit annoying to go through all of these uh, with all of the other ones. So what you can do is we can set a filter. So if you want to take, take a look at the items that have a unique outcome, this doesn't actually hide anything else. This doesn't hide anything else. This only shows items with unique outcomes, but the other ones are just hidden from the UI. They're still existent. So now we can go through those and take a look at the ones we actually care about. So what we can do, for instance, we can move Queen of the Forest to Heights here, if we do care about that. We can also look for other ones. Now, this tiering is now more focused on the end game state of the build. You would probably work slightly different if the um, it would be in the leak start. But you can basically work your way through filters, through a filter, and adjust the venation card steering if you want something else. Don't forget, you can just drag and drop things from one tier to another one. And once you're done, for instance, you can also add a new tier. So, for instance, if you care about farming the Anarchist Prize card for Vortex Crypt, you could move it into a tier of its own, give it some special highlight. Give it maybe a map icon or something like that, and then be happy with that. You can do all of these adjustments anytime. Um, right now, we've been talking about the cell phone thing. So, what do you do if you want this tier link to then stay exactly how you set it up? If you're playing cell phone, click log all. Log all means any item that is locked 
will not be affected by the tiering. So it stays exactly the way you've selected it. This also works with currency, so you can do it anywhere else in the filter. Or oh, with unique items, not everywhere, but anytime there is the lock all button, which is pretty much an old tier list. And we also want to give Crimson Temples a higher highlight. For that, we go into Maps, Highlight and Height, Highlight Specific Maps, and this is actually our first encounter with a special rule. And it's quite easy. We just tip, uh, type in Crimson Temple, add it to the list, click on Show. It actually auto-clicks on Show. Um, we can adjust its appearance if you want to, make it look very shiny if you care about that, make it uh, crimson-y. Very important for the Crimson Temple. I think that's fairly crimson, right? Right? Yeah, it's pretty crimson. And it's actually more like dirty. Yeah. There we go. That's that's crimson. Perfect. Right. You can give it a sound as well, and that's how you work with that. So let's jump back into our little presentation. And let's take a look at the last example. A uh, cast leveling. This is an intermediate example. It's a little bit more complex, but it's also quite fast to get done. So in, in this example, we want scepters and wands. We only want to highlight gear if it has energy shield or energy shield like. We want the blue and green uh, blue links, maybe some green and some red. Uh, we want to hide quivers and recipe items. We want to highlight lightning gems for our lightning gem plus one wand recipe. We want to have icons on the wisdom scrolls and additionally we want to take a look how would we do that if we would use be using an attack build. What do we do different? Because there are some tools to look into that. So here we'll be focusing on custom rules. They are very powerful. They are fairly easy to use and give you a lot of power to do large scale adjustments very easily. We're also going to take a look at item progression, specifically useful for new builds. Oh yeah, and I totally forgot that, and this is an important part. So how would I, before we jump that, how would we improve our export workflow? How would we adjust this filter really quickly? For that, we're going to go to save and export like before and say this is our Archer Endgame demo. But instead of just clicking sync and download, we're going to check these buttons. We're going to click load by default and explode export and quick save. If you prefer synchronize and click sync, if you prefer download and click download. And if you also have the access to the Patreon download feature, you can use it here. We, I'm going to talk about that later. So now you click Sync or Download, click Save. It is saved. And now if you want to resume updating, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have five. And since we've set this filter to auto load, it is already loaded when we just load filter blade. You don't need to do anything else. Your filter is loaded and you can proceed editing it. And if I now I do some adjustment, let's say I don't, I really hate the post the curious card, I'm going to delete it. And you want to save this section, click quick save. And all of this exposing is now done. You can go in game, click on refresh the filter and you got it. This is really, really nice because this allows you to basically update your filter and adjust it with one single click. You just F5, everything is loaded. Um, for instance, you don't care. Oh, yeah, I wanted to hide the crafting section. Let's hide the crafting section completely. Turn it off. Right click, turn off. Quick save, done, updated, refresh in game, back to zooming. This is, this is really efficient, and you want to do exactly that if you are, want to be efficient. Because um, this allows you to do changes to your filter really fast without. Um, getting AFK and out of the game for long and uh, it allows you to be quite fast and you can't or can't predict to be have your filter perfect maybe there's some new meta discovery maybe you want to change something and it's much easier to modify iteratively along the way than to try to make a perfect filter from the get-go and that will be serving you for all the time so i really recommend you to use this quick save uh, trick to be able to modify without any problems. Plus, every time you quick save, you get the latest version of the filter. So you get the latest economy update, which is awesome, I think. Right, next example. We want to take a look at the caster leveling demo. Whew. Let's start again. So for this example, we're going to go to overview. We're going to reset completely. So we, since we're starting out completely fresh, um, I do want to delete the Archer demo filter. That's fine. 
All right, so we're going to go back to softcore. We're using a softcore filter for this one. We are playing a lightning caster. Now, as a lightning caster, you've read in your guide or you know yourself, you want to use a plus one uh, lightning recipe gem well, recipe. That means you need to collect lightning gems and for 40 quality total to sell them and get yourself a plus one wand, right? How do you do that? You go to vendor recipes. You could also, of course, search for lightning. And you find the lightning spill gem recipe, right? There it is. It's gray because it's disabled. You go there, click on show. That's it. You don't need to take care of the 63 gems that is there. It's excellent, an excellent way to boost your caster start. You can do the same with all of the other gems like fire, lightning, cold, chaos, the chaos, the sorry, the minion helmet. That's it. Right. Next up, we want to level. We want to adjust our leveling build. How do we do that? You could go with the similar approach as we've seen before, but you want to be a bit more efficient. Let's hide items by slot. For that, we're going to scroll down to campaign. This only applies to the campaign part. Going to click add show hide campaign rules. And we're going to hide items by slot because we don't even care about those. So first of all, we're going to select the classes we don't care about. Uh, we don't care about axes, normal daggers, claws, maces, thrusting swords. There's also some right click options there, right click options. One-handed sword, two-handed axes, all of this stuff, bows. If you don't have dexterity, rune daggers as well, quivers, staves. Oh, the rest is fine. Perfect. So what do we do there? Um, well, what kind of strictness does it hide? When does it hide it? Well, we can adjust all of that. So the rarities can be adjusted below. And you can also give it an item level. Well, we don't actually see the item level thing here. How do we add, add it? You click on add attribute and you click on anything you care about, like item level. And now you can adjust the item level. So for instance, we can set the um, rule that anytime the item level is larger than 24, it, it, remember, this does not affect the end game. This does not affect uniques. This does not affect six links. All of that is handled in a different section. So you can be very safe here. Anytime you find some something above level item level 24, no matter if it's normal magic or rare, you will this rule will apply. We can of course check it and simulate. So we go to 24. And you can also control click an item to find out where you what's hiding or showing it. So you can right click, jump to rule, and it shows you this rule is uh, affecting it. You can also rename the rule to call it uh, my height or oh, height layer one. And you can also duplicate the rule. So we can, for instance, click on the duplicate button. And now you have the rule below that. Um, it's the unnamed custom rule. We probably should give it like a copy of height rule, but that's fine. You can adjust that. And for instance, in this case, you want to adjust it to do the same at level 16 plus but not affect rare items. So now any normal magic item that is not like a RGB recipe, that is not a very specific uh, unique or some fractured item, on any, any kind of exception, you don't need to care about any of those, those are all handled, that is normal or magic will be hidden starting with item level 16. If it's also rare, starting with 24, perfectly well. All right, now we want to highlight a little bit more. We are playing a caster. We want to see all those uh, juicy wands and scepters with extra highlight. Let's highlight this slot. And this is what I meant by it, we could have done the whole thing with the end game more efficient. So instead of fidgeting with every single base, we could have added these rules in the end game just as well here in this section. And it's a lot easier to do these like wide scale adjustments. So now what do we highlight? Only rare items. And if they're wands or scepters, perfect. No matter the item level, but let's give them a nice border, something like very inspiring of rare power. Um, I'm going to go with this one. You'll be the, I'm, I'm not really great at design, so you'll be the judge of my color schemes. You can, of course, also give them an icon because this lets you know, hey, this here, you have your caster gear. Grab it. Perfect. Give it a sound. What sound do we use? A custom, ma a custom sound. Maven sounds, obviously. Perfect. And um, we are good to go, right? 
Of course, you can rename that. You can also do the same thing for highlight and hide by armor types. I don't only want to show you one example there. We want to highlight our energy shoot gear, right? Or hide the other ones. So to highlight energy shoot gear, we go to the highlight items by, by type. You can adjust the rarity again. So we can say something like that. Uh, give it a certain uh, background color that you are enjoying. Once again, please don't judge me too hard on the stylistics of that. Um, There we go. Give it some decently looking border. I think that looks fair. And you can also give it even some stronger text color if you really care about this stuff. And now we can set it up to only affect energy shield gear or gear that has any kind of energy shield to it. So yes, evasion, armor, yes, evasion armor, right? So only S part. So now all the energy shield gear that is rare that you find while leveling will be highlighted this way. Let's look at that. I'm gonna disable all of that and only generate loot here. Okay, we can see the gear quite clearly, right? There's our scepter, there's our energy shield gear. The other rares are still shown. You can also disable them if you don't care about that. You can also try a different level of simulation. You can see a lot more items are hidden because you haven't adjusted any of that. All right, what else do we want to change? We want to take a look at the sockets. Sockets are important, especially at the start of the game. You're going to need your socketed link gear, right? So there's a lot of things you can do with sockets. The first thing you can do is you might care specifically about certain three and four links. The general three and four links highlight just any kind of three links and any kind of four links. What if you only want to see four links that has at least two blue sockets? Well, let's go to four links, the four links section. And in here, you can enter BB. Add. Done. Now only four links will be shown that are normal or magic. You can have to do the same with rares as well. Um, only these items will receive this blue border if they have a blue socket. You can do like some BG as well or uh, GG. It's also noted you don't need to add every single combination like GB and BG is the same thing. That means any item that has at least a BG socket group to it will be affected by that. Now, you might be wondering, um, what do you, what do you want to do if you want to see a socket rule? Not just, uh, sorry, not just a socket group, but a socket rule. Well, you can do that as here as well. You can add custom socket rules. You can also do it anywhere else. So for instance, for the custom socket rule, there is the act and build specific items. And in, I actually don't quite remember it was, I could search here, but let's find it ourselves. I think it was the act and build specific items. And in act one, there are a bunch of different things specifically designed for act one. So we could go to act one caster weapons. And here we see caster weapons with at least three sockets, not links, sockets will be highlighted. But often, what if you want to highlight them if only they have specific socket colors? Then we can click the condition here plus. And we can say it at least one total sockets um, with at least three blue ones or two blue ones. And in our case, it probably so we're going to remove this rule. So in this case, the rule is we want to have only we want to have at least three sockets and at least two of them should be blue. And we can, of course, adjust this to whatever you want. Right. So you can adjust any kind of uh, socket colors, rules, and so forth. And these menus are used anywhere. Now let's quickly adjust our filter further. We don't care about quivers. We can just right-click, turn off. You don't care about quivers, right? You don't care about summoner gear, turn off. Uh, what else do you care about? Rare items, melee gear, turn off. Karchi gear, turn off. Summoner gear, no to that. Armors, now oh, you can adjust things here if you want. It's totally fine, actually. Um, so use the right click liberately for things that you're certain you don't care about. They will be still shown as remaining gear. Most of the times uh, gear is turned off intelligently, so they will be still shown as like random vendor items, but you will still see your custom gear highlighted correctly, right? Um, icons on wisdom scrolls. Well, this one is easy. I think you, we can manage it really easily. Wisdom. But you see there's a bunch of wisdom uh, exceptions. There's a wisdom scrolls campaign and currency for leveling. Probably should you find the names on that. So stack uh, campaign wisdom scrolls. Go there, add an icon so that you can find it really easily. 
we're going to go with the yellow raindrop. I don't know, sorry. We're going to copy that style, go back to search, find the currency we're leveling again, and there's our wisdom scroll, a single one, so it's not stacked. Paste that here as well. So one last thing, how would we do that if that would be a melee gear character? Because with melee or with archers that care about the item quote, you don't just want to see any rare item, you want to see the best ones or the best normal items for crafting. For that, you have the item progression function. So you can head here into item progression and click a personal item progression and then select the weapon type, such as if you're playing a Bone Shatter 200X build, or mace build, you can go there and select 200 maces. And this way, it will show what items is going to highlight from what to what. So this way, you will always see the best normal and magic items that you can slap an essence on or something like that from this level to this level. So on level 50, 56 to 56 or 57 to 58, depending on what items get enabled when, you will only see the best weapon available. You can also increase the overlap. If you want to see more items, you can add link and socket requirements, play around with the rarity. But this is a really, really useful tool in order to get your perfect um, attack build leveling setup. Right, as with usual, afterwards we'd go to save and export and be done there. So let me quickly go over the rest of my notes. I do have some final notes to add, but we are mostly done with our little presentation. So recommendations, what can I recommend to you? Uh, some advanced features, I don't have time to show you that right now, but it's definitely worth noting. If you want to do some global edits, like disable all border colors, uh, minimize all hidden items, um, play around, maximize the size of all items, the style tab has a lot of cool global changes for that. Uh, if you are into making really advanced filters with like hundreds of thousands of changes, and you want to use the modular and have, have a um, have a special filter for st for styles or want to keep your um, style modular and add it into all of your filters, try out presets. We have a YouTube video on that on my YouTube channel. Those are really powerful advanced features. If you are um, just an intermediate user, don't care about all of that, you can still take a look at presets, but not for making, but for using. If you go to overview, click on presets here, you can use some of my presets, such as the... I'm going to reset here, such as the easy cast leveling preset. You can just add that, and you pretty much got most of the things we've been do working on already integrated in the filter. So you can now just check out how it looks in level 33, and you'll find that most of the things we kind of don't ca didn't care about are already hidden or highlighted correctly, right? Um, okay, then there's also, oh yeah, and there's also public presets like. Uh, if you head there, click on public, you will see presets like a Diablo 2 soundtrack by Cesario and a whole bunch of other things that you can search for very specific things. So those are also quite neat. Check those out. Um, you can change the strictness and style anytime. If you have a working safe ready with a bunch of, uh, bunch of changes, you just go back to overview, change the strictness and style, and everything will adapt. Um, then if you try to hide a mirror, and you, can, you should definitely you do that, see what happens on the uh, export screen. We have a lot of special tests for expensive items. So we are trying to prevent... So it's been an ongoing race okay, from between us trying to make cooler tools and users doing uh, new stupid things. So we, we did try to, to warn you if you do something really silly, like high divine ops or mirrors or six link gear. So the filter should be doing that quite well. Or filter plane. Additional recommendations. Um, don't, don't give too many sounds and icons to items. You want to be able to pick up the things only you care about. You don't want to run off screen every time uh, I don't transmute drops. Don't use too many different sounds and icons. There's value in your in the pattern recognition. So have item like groups, have the expensive group, the less expensive group. Um, don't give the best, best mirrority items an exotic sound. PoE is a loud game. And maybe you think it's just some random sound you never heard about. It's um, it happening in the middle of the fight, and you don't notice it. So try to use, try to prepare yourself by using a high tier sound, and don't make like an insane high tier. Don't think of strictness as upgrades. I've seen that a few times, and people like go uber plus strict on the as a beginner, and then basically find nothing and die and get depressed. So don't do that. It's don't. Um, don't be afraid to use echo updated filters on cell phone. 
um, it, you don't need to go stable. So when do you when you should update? How often should you update? Always before the leak start. We finish our, the filter blade update four to six hours before the start of the leak. Uh, I already have a working um, trial of the answers filter ready, but if I would update it right now, nothing would work, everything would crash, and I would get 7,000 messages of people asking me why can't I use my filter on standard. Um, so it doesn't work right now. So we finish the update um, on Friday. I do a little bit of a filter update to release stream. It's quite large. It's really fun. You feel free to join there. Uh, also go over the new features there. If you have a filter, Oh yeah, and you definitely need to update. If your filter shows ping items in game, you most likely have not updated successfully. Maybe there was some caching error, maybe something else, but then you definitely should take care to update yourself. Like if you will do a trial and the trial drops ping items, like ping tattoos, you have not updated correctly. Go back to filter update, grab a new version. Um, on during the trade leaks, during the first weeks update regularly uh, once every few days it will give you an edge by knowing what items are valued how um later on you can maybe do it once a week it, not much happens after let's say week three um, all right feedback and support something i do want to ask you guys i do appreciate feedback we definitely i definitely need feedback if you have suggestions if you have ui suggestions if you want to uh, think i should see something differently if you think the filter or the filter blade can improve in any way please join filter blade discord it's an active 12k plus member community um for that head over to filter blade and click that discord button um yeah right um, otherwise, if you are interested in supporting us, a filter and the filter blade will always be free. Um, I do feel free. You can disable adblock, recommend the site to other people. We also have a patron up and patron supporters receive a small gimmick. They do have the auto update feature. Um, it was a feature that was way too expensive to release for public because it runs a lot of server-side costs on Lambda functions. I, I don't want to go into the technical details. Hit me up on um, Patreon if you, sorry, on Discord if you care about that. But Patreon supporters do get that. It's a tiny, I suppose, pay for convenience feature at this point. Um, and instead of having to update occasionally, it will just, our servers will do that for you. Uh, well, yeah, that's uh, basically it. Thank you so much, class. This one, I hope I didn't take too much time. Um, thanks oh, for it listening. Was, it was really good. I don't actually have time to take questions. We have a meeting in three minutes, but uh, that was a really good in-depth like presentation. And again, guys, make sure you support Neverything on Patreon. We like would be pretty lost without having Filter Blade and everything. So I think I have the highest supporter pack. It's it's very worth it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, and thank you for inviting. It's been really fun. I hope you guys uh, learned a few things. And if you have any questions or about anything I've said right now or do have any questions, do feel free to join Discord. I'm pretty sure I can answer those uh, sooner. Thank nice. you. Nice. Nice. Thank you again. And thanks for everyone watching on YouTube. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you check out Filter Blade. Check out the Patreon. And uh, and everything streams sometimes, especially right before League starts. So make sure you check that out. And if you like the video, but more importantly, try to die. That's than I do.